electric charges and fields is the first chapter of second PUC physics. In this video, I will be covering introduction to electric charges, importance of static electricity, electromagnetism and electroscope experiment. Kindly go through the video till end so that to understand the concepts of it deeply. I am Monisha working as a teacher from past 10 years and I am handling maths and physics for 8th to 12th grade students. This is the map of electric charges and fields. These are the topics in this chapter. In this video, I will be explaining the concepts of electric charges with introductory part. Coming to static electricity. Wonder why you get zapped when touching a door knob, especially during winter? People will tell you it's a simple case of static electricity. But what is static electricity? In some texts, static electricity is a term supposedly used for electricity that doesn't deal with moving charges. But actually, there is a movement of charges occurring in that. In fact, when you get zapped, charges are actually moving between your fingers and the door knob. However, the movements is only brief compared to the current in a closed circuit. How have you experienced static electricity? When we walk across a carpet, negative charges from the carpet goes onto you. Your body is now built up of negative charge. So how do stationary charges allow people to get zapped? To understand this phenomena, try to recall the particles that make up an atom. That's right, protons, neutrons and electrons. Out of these three, electrons are easily removed from an atom since the forces that bind them to an atom are weaker than those that holds the neutrons and protons together in the atomic nuclei. Now there are some materials that easily lose their electrons compared to others. I have included a list here ranking some materials based on their ability to lose electrons and also some gain electrons. The one at the top has a greater tendency to lose electrons while the one at the bottom has the least. Such a list is known as triboelectric series. So what is triboelectric effect? The triboelectric effect is a type of contact electrification on which certain materials become electrically charged after they are separated from a different material with which they were in contact. So, the triboelectric series is a list that ranks materials according to their tendency to gain or lose electrons. Therefore, based on the list, if you rubbed a glass rod with a silk cloth, it is the glass rod that would lose electrons to the cloth. When this happens, the glass rod becomes positively charged while the silk cloth having gained excess electrons become negatively charged. Then, when you draw the glass rod close to small bits of paper, the positively charged glass rod attracts the electrons in the paper and repels the positive side. This allows the bits of paper to stick to the glass rod as you can see in the figure. In the case of people getting zapped, they usually gain electrons when they walk across a carpeted floor. The interaction is between the carpet and the soles of their shoes, but the overall charge of their bodies get affected. You can imagine them as walking negatively charged bodies. So when they touch a metal door knob, the excess electrons readily leap from their hands to the metal knob and they get zapped. Like this, these are the transferring charge. There are three methods by which charges can be transferred to build up static electricity. Charging by friction, by conduction and by induction. I am taking charging by conduction, sorry induction. Electrons on the girl's fingertip produce an electric field. 
that repels negative charges and attracts positive charges on the door knob. An overall positive charge is induced on the edge of the door knob. In the first case, the hand has a negative charge that is a surplus of electrons. In the second B, if the hand touches the metal door knob, there is a rapid transfer of electrons and a shock is felt. But in the third case, if the hand touches the wooden door frame, there is a slower transfer of electrons and no shock is felt. There are numerous interactions between plastic glass rods and fur and also silk cloth. First one is interaction between plastic rods rubbed on fur. Plain plastic rods neither attract nor ripple each other. But after being rubbed with fur, the rods ripple each other because like charges ripple. Next is interaction between glass rods rubbed on silk. Plain glass rods neither attract nor ripple each other. But after being rubbed with silk, the rods ripple each other. Last one is interaction between objects with opposite charges. The fur rubbed plastic rod and the silk rubbed glass rod attract each other. And the fur and silk each attracts the rod it rubbed. Let us explain it a little bit deeply. First observe that if two glass rods rubbed with wool or silk cloth are brought close to each other, they ripple each other as per figure A. The two strands of wool or two pieces of silk cloth with each other when the rods were rubbed also ripple each other. However, the glass rod and wool attracted each other. Similarly, two plastic rods rubbed with cat's fur ripple each other as per figure B but attracted the fur. On the other hand, the plastic rod attracts the glass rod as per figure C but ripple the silk or wool with which the glass rod is rubbed. The glass rod ripples the fur. If a plastic rod rubbed with fur is made to touch two small pith balls, nowadays we can use polystyrene balls suspended by silk or nylon thread, then the balls ripple each other as per figure D and are also rippled by the rod. A similar effect is found if the pith balls are touched with the glass rod rubbed with silk as per figure E. A dramatic observation is that a pith ball touched with the glass rod attracts another pith ball touched with plastic rod as per figure F. These seemingly simple facts were established from years of efforts and careful experiments and the analysis. It was concluded after many careful studies by different scientists that there were only two kinds of entity which is called as electric charge. Two kinds of electrification that we find that are like charges ripple and unlike charges attract each other. You can see here like charges ripple and the opposites attract. Work can be done to store electrical potential energy. Next coming to the basics of electric charges. So what do you mean by electric charges? Electric charge is a physical property of matter that causes it to experience a force when placed in an electromagnetic field. There are two types of electric charge, positive and negative. I have already told you like charges ripple and unlike charges attract each other. An object with an absence of net charge is referred as neutral. In ordinary matter, negative charge is carried by electrons and positive charge is carried by protons in the nuclei of atom. If there are more electrons than protons, then the matter is said to be negatively charged. But if there are more protons, then the matter is said to be positively charged. If there are equal number of positive and negative charge, then it is called as neutral. Coming to polarity of charge. What do you mean by polarity? The phenomenon of static electricity requires a separation of positive and negative charges. When two materials are in contact, electrons may move 
from one material to the other which leaves an excess of positive charge on one material and an equal negative charge on the other when two objects gets charged by rubbing each other and they are again brought closer their charges will get neutralized that is nullifies therefore the charges were named negative and positive by american scientist benjamin franklin when we add positive number to negative number of same magnitude what happens the sum will be zero if an object possesses electric charge it is said to be electrified or charged when it has no charge it is said to be neutral next coming to the most important topic that is electromagnetism so what do you mean by electromagnetism an electric charge has electric field and if it moves it will generate magnetic field the combination of both electric and magnetic fields together called electromagnetic field and the interaction with the charges as you see in this diagram is the source of electromagnetic force electromagnetism is a branch of physics involving the study of electromagnetic force a type of physical interaction that occurs between electrically charged particles the electromagnetic force is carried by electromagnetic fields composed of electric field and magnetic field and it is responsible for electromagnetic radiation such as light electromagnetic phenomena is sometimes called as lorentz force which includes both electricity and magnetism which are different manifestation of the same phenomena These are some of the applications of electromagnetism. Technological applications of electromagnetism include cell phones, MRI scanners, maglev train, TV, video and audio tapes, data storage devices, speakers, microphones and doorbells. Electromagnetism is extremely important in modern life. Next coming to one of the most important experiment and topic of today's session. that is electroscope experiment the diagram which are shown here is the setup of electroscope experiment let us do a small experiment the gold leaf electroscope consists of a brass rod with the brass disc as its top and with the two gold leaf strips cut metal foil at the other end as shown in the figure the rod is inserted through a rubber or plastic stopper into the glass container the tin foil inside and the wooden base makes the electroscope more effective uses of gold leaf electroscope is to detect and measure the charge on a body The body to be tested is touched to the brass disc of the uncharged electroscope. It has to be touched to the uncharged electroscope. If the body is charged, the leaves at the electroscope diverge. The amount of divergence of the leaves is the measure of amount of charge on the body. to find the nature of the charge on the body for this it is first necessary to charge the electroscope positively or negatively this is done by touching the brass disc of the electroscope with the positively or negatively charged body the leaves acquire the same charge as on the charged body and diverge let us assume that the electroscope is negatively charged Now bring the body to be tested close to the brass disc of the electroscope. If the divergence of the leaves increases, it has the same charge as the electroscope that is negative in this case. If the divergence of the leaves decreases, it has opposite charge as on the electroscope that is positive charge in this case. This is a small demonstration to show 
the help or the importance of lightning rod the presence of lightning rod allows for the gradual release of static charge from the storm cloud this prevents the sudden and explosive discharge which is characteristics of lightning strike this is the importance of lightning rod differentiating static electricity and current electricity static electricity is charges at rest whereas current electricity is charges moving in static electricity it is the accumulation of excess electrical charges positive or negative on a body the charges are transferred from one body to another remain at rest on its surface for example comb rubbed with hair gains electrons becomes negatively charged and attracts a piece of paper whereas current electricity means flow of free electrons or charges in a particular direction constitute an electric current or current electricity the diagram shows the flow of conventional flow of current shall we summarize all the topics here gravity electric and magnetic forces alter properties of the surrounding space these properties are called force fields electromagnetic forces is one of the four fundamental forces which exist in the universe a single electromagnetic field surrounds every moving electric charge static occurs in all daily operations static accumulation can cause a substantial build up of energy the main hazards of static are fire and explosion from sparks with enough energy to ignite flammable vapors effective bonding grounding relaxation time and way possible minimizing the generation of static by controlling flow rates are ways to prevent static electricity from causing a spark low conductivity fuels accumulate static more than high conductivity fuels static build up doesn't require high flow rates static can be controlled by allowing the charge to dissipate safely when in doubt assume a material is static accumulator if you like this video kindly share comment and subscribe my channel thanks a lot